93.7 Express FM, it is Paul Marsh, and I'm delighted to be joined on a Zoom call by Harley Moon Kemp. Morning, Harley Moon, how are you doing? Good morning. I am shaking off my Friday morning hangover, but happy to be talking to you. <laughs> that's, that's what we like to hear. So um, for, those of, uh, for those out there that don't know who Harley Moon Kemp is, tell us a little bit about yourself. I am a singer-songwriter, and I freaking love my country music. <laughs> um, so I've got a lot of kind of country influence out there, and um, I just like writing songs that make people feel happy or want to laugh, really. I mean, I, I have seen your live stage performances, and I could not agree with that statement more. You just want people to have a, a great time. Um, musical talent does run in your family. You have a, a very sort of famous and well-known family. Now, I have to ask, do you feel there's two sides of this coin? Obviously, having a famous family probably opens some doors, but it also probably puts some added pressure on you as well. So do you feel that it's helped or hindered? To me personally, it, it was always something I was super shy about. I think I always wanted to do music since I was kind of 15, and I just was so nervous to go anywhere and hear people going oh it's so and so's kid and thinking oh no they're not going to like me or they think you're entitled but you've worked really hard and you kind of and you kind of hope that people see past that and it's taken me a really long time I always stayed behind the scenes I always wrote songs for other people and um, was writing for other artists and then it wasn't actually until lockdown when I thought, okay, I've got nothing to lose here. I'll just put a song out and see what happens. No kind of expectation of anything. And I put my first single out and it went to, uh, it went to number one on the UK iTunes country chart. Wow. Which was like a real slap in the face for thinking, okay, <laughs> okay, maybe I can do this. And what then, what do you know, eh? Yeah, it's my first bit of confidence from there, really. So I think it has always made me, yeah, it's made me kind of, kind of shy um now i have to be completely honest here and say something so for somebody that is so beautiful you have awful choices in men or at least your songs would lead <laughs> us to believe that um <laughs> what exactly do you look for in a man everything wrong <laughs> or every warning sign you've got i'll take it <laughs> <laughs> um, so you do have the new single uh, coming out it's a double A side you've got Coming Up and Pretty For You um, just so for those that we're, we're going to play Coming Up in just a little bit for, but for those that haven't heard it yet tell us a little bit about the tracks Coming Up was um, was actually not written about a guy which was a nice first for me um, <laughs> Coming Up was uh was just kind of feeling really weighed down by like the news constantly being on and listening to my friends, you know, it, it's such a dark time and the conversation was feeling so low. And I think I just, you don't always want to be living in that space. You know, I wanted to feel good. I wanted to get out. I wanted to laugh. I wanted to have fun. And I kind of started writing, I'm coming, I'm coming up. And I, I got so excited when I was singing it and writing it on the guitar. And then um, I just thought, God, if I write this and put this out, maybe it will bring other people joy. And now I love it. I'm dancing in the kitchen to this song. So I just thought, OK, hopefully this brings other people a bit of an uplift, even if it's only three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how did it feel writing with Katie Hurt and, of course, Nora and the Wells, Fred Abbott? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I've been playing in the same kind of festival circuit as Katie um in the summer so I keep seeing her around I keep hearing her song which is so cool and um so me and her just went on zoom and I said I've got this really annoyingly catchy chorus <laughs> I was like about wanting to about wanting to feel good and we just smashed it out in about an hour we just were done and then wow. um, yeah I took it to the studio in with Fred who I do all my songs with Fred and he can help tweak it and shape it and build it and uh yeah it's really really good fun now for, as you said you only sort of recently begun sort of coming out there and, and being a, an artist yourself how did it feel to win the 2021 british country music award for best new artist honestly even hearing you say it makes me feel like <laughs> no i didn't did I? <laughs> I um it was a complete shock because they asked me to play um at the show and I didn't 
honestly know that I was even up for it. I, I, I didn't, I didn't have a clue. So I, I was sat in the dressing room and they were going, Harley, Harley. And I thought, hold on, no, I'm not on for another hour. And they were like, you've won. I thought, I've won, what have I won? I was so overwhelmed, honestly. I, I've still got the, um, I've still got the awards sat on my, on my fireplace. It just makes me laugh with, you never know where life is gonna take you sort of feeling. Um, now, like I said earlier, I saw you earlier this year at Buckle and Boots. Now, the one yeah. thing you can say about your stage performance is it doesn't matter whether you're the headline at nine o'clock at night or you're on earlier at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, you're getting the exact same show. There's no coming in lightly. There's a big wet fish sm smack straight in the face. You are coming to a party, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I love that. That's definitely what I try and make my show feel like. I mean... I'm dressed up. I'm kind of calling myself kind of drag queen country chic when I come on with my costumes. I love dressing up. I love tassels and glitter and dancing. And um, yeah, and I just try and keep it really fun and lighthearted. I love going to fun gigs. I love dancing and kind of being being silly. And I just hope, I love looking out and just seeing people laughing or smiling and dancing with me. And it, yeah, it, I love. I want to make my show a party. It's a buzz. Well, it's that... a night of. It's an hour of bad dates, heartbreaks, and this and some dancing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that kind of leads perfectly into my next question. I was going to say your outfits are, are phenomenal. You know, really, really out there. Um, are there any country artists that you look to for inspiration, both musically and with looks and everything else like that? Um. With looks, no, actually. I, I watch a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race <laughs> and they have some great ideas on there of what they're making. So I actually work with my friend who's a costume seamstress. So I kind of come up with some like, hey, what about these pants? But we just like put glitter and tassels all down yeah. the sides. And she's like, yeah, all right, right, I'll make it. And I'm like, so me and her kind of just come up with funky ideas together. Um, and then... For music, honestly, I listen to everything. I don't know when I'm going to get inspiration from a particular song. I usually do just play like country radio stations where I can just hear all different types of music. And I feel like for me, if I hear something for the first time, that's when I get the most inspiration to want to write. But I, lo I love a lot, love Marin Morris or Chris Stapleton, oh. all, the good, all the good country pop classics. Um, country music is growing in the UK all the time. Why do you think there has been this massive country music explosion in the last six or seven years? I don't know. You know what, actually? Maybe it was a little bit for me, the Netflix show, um, Nashville. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I was always kind of like playing on the guitar. I, 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 I write a song as if I'm imagining a film. I'm not trying to write a song. I feel like I'm watching a film, which is a weird thing to no, say. No, no, I, I completely get makes, that, yeah. Yeah, that also makes the song make sense to me because there's a beginning, a middle and end, and I can see why, I can feel the details of the song. And that's why I like country music because they, they write so differently. Um, and I think when I started getting into that Nashville TV show, that's when I just fell so deeply down the Nashville hole. And, um, and I don't know if, if that was the same for other people, but very shortly as I started getting into that show as well, I got sent to Nashville to go and write. Okay. And I was just being smacked with Nashville and country music within a really short space of time after kind of doing my own style of music. So... It, yeah. it, it's funny you should say that because that's exactly how I got into country music. I, I throughout my life I've been into all types of music from from pop and rock and hip hop and everything else. I've been into everything. I love all types of music. Um, I've always been of the opinion that country music was, you know, my wife's left me and the dogs run off and I've lost my job and all of that, and and, and I struggled with it. And then uh, two things got me into country music. It was the Foo Fighters working with Zach Brown Band or Dave Grohl working with Zach Brown Band. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a massive Foo Fighters fan, so I got into Zach Brown Band through that. And then Nashville, the TV series, and I was like, hang about. This isn't country music. This is actually more akin to rock music and, and pop all... music. And, and, and country has just evolved so much in the last 10 to 15 years that it yeah. can't be pigeonholed into that that 
vibe that it had 30, 40 years ago that we all think of, you know? Not to say that, obviously, country music from that far ago is is not good, because it clearly, clearly is, but it's evolved, hasn't it, as a, as a genre? Yeah, it's got so much crossover now, I think, you know, there's kind of country pop, country rock, but, um, yeah, I love it all. Right, so it is Christmas. It's now the, is it the second? Yeah, second of December. What does Christmas with Harley Moon and the Kemps look like? Oh, honestly, I'd say it's kind of lazy. <laughs> Lots of onesies. Lots of watching telly, no one getting up unless it's to make a sandwich or go to the toilet, that <laughs> kind of vibe. <laughs> and by the sounds of it, the odd party or two. Yeah, I mean, I've, got, I've done my first one. I think uh, I try not to go to too many, but there's, there's a lot of playing the piano. Love okay. playing the piano. Yeah, I suppose the, the musical family, I suppose you all have a sing song around the fire and all that type of jazz. Yeah, me and my dad like to jam on the piano together. So, so that's, um, that's a nice one. And Ronan introducing every song is shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Harley Moon, it's been so great talking to you. I really appreciate it. I wish you the best of luck with your singles and uh, and and everything. I'm sure there's going to be lots of festivals next year, and hopefully our cro- our paths will cross at that one. So there is only one thing left to do, and that's to introduce your new single. Thank you. I'm Harley Moon Kemp, and you are listening to Coming Up on Express FM. <laughs> 